Hello and welcome to my video. Today I'm going to be changing my winter tyres and I'm going to also change the glow plugs because now the winter is here, the roads are very slippery and my van is not starting very well in the mornings. So I went to the shop yesterday and bought these new glow plugs. Uh, as you can see, uh, this is a five cylinder so there's five to change. Also I have this um, alternator belt which I'm going to change because this one's a bit squeaky so it's probably stretched and a bit worn out. Um, over here uh, yesterday I just um, painted the wheels quickly for the winter tyres. I just had this grey um, paint that I had in the cupboard so don't particularly know if I like it yet with the white van and these are the these are actually off-road tyres because this is a four-wheel drive they work pretty well in the snow, but I have these studded tires, um, which I might as well use because I have them. Um, and it's a bit more secure. I prefer the studded tires. Um, so this is a van. It's a 2001 uh, T4 Volkswagen T4 Synchro with a 2.5 engine. And down here somewhere, is where the glow plugs are. And I'm not looking forward to changing them because they are deep down in there somewhere. But I shall try and get one out and then I shall update you. Okay, first of all, I'm just removing these four um, screws. I'm gonna take the grill off and then I am going to, I think, undo these two screws, these two, and then hopefully, there might be some more screws under here, I'm not sure yet, um, but hopefully I can move the radiator forward to give me a bit more room because it's really hard to get to them down there. So I shall undo all this lot and see what happens. As you see, I have removed these two and these two and also I took the clip off the intercooler tube just to give it some more flexibility. I also removed this, I probably didn't need to, but I have. And now, as you can see, this whole thing now gives me so much more room um, to be able to get to them. So I'll probably put a piece of wood or something in there to wedge it so it doesn't keep closing. Okay. Okay, so first of all, I just removed. Uh, hold on, if I can get this. I removed this um, plug, which goes on the end of the glow plug. Um, I just removed it with a pair of these angled um, grips. Um, so now, what I'm going to do is spray some WD 40 um, on the glow plug. I'll do this for each of them. Just, um, well, they get lots of dirt and grime and everything that could make them stick. So anything to help them come loose, because I don't want them to snap. Uh, also, what I didn't mention is um, the engine is warm. I drove for like 20 minutes to get here. Um, so that's always better that the um, metals expand. And it's not, if it's uh, really cold, then the metal is more likely to snap. So... Yeah, warm engine, not too warm, but um, it's better. Okay, first one is out. Um, man, it's really difficult to um, get to them. I can't get it in focus for some reason. There's a bit of light on here. Um, you can see it's pretty sooted up. So definitely a good idea to change them, that's better. Um, for some reason, it was only like literally finger tight. I hardly put any pressure on there. I just used this uh, long socket with an extension and quarter inch, and it's a 10 mil socket. Um, and as you can see, it fits on there really nicely. Um, so that's the first one out. So let's check that I have the right ones because sometimes the parts store guys 
Yep, it looks right. It has slightly different end on here, but hopefully it will the, the uh, plug will fit. Um, I went for the NGK ones, they were slightly more expensive, but I don't believe in buying the cheap stuff. If you're going to do this, you might as well do it less often with better quality other than buying one's half the price and then they only last one winter because I don't want to do this again for a long time. So let's see, I'll try put this in and go from there. Okay, I have now changed all five and as you can see, they're all very black and sooted up. Um, I didn't film the whole thing because it's pretty boring and I used different angled um, pliers to get um, the um, plugs for the um, that slip over the ends of these um, they were very difficult to um, get off because I can show you um, this one actually here I don't know if I can get that on camera it was very difficult to get off and the access is really difficult and the rubber is quite brittle so it actually split so I've just put some rubberized tape around it um, but as you can see that all of them are so hard and I can't even really film you can see one just down there they have like these L-shaped caps plugs that go on the end of the plugs glow plugs so, so I can't say I enjoyed this job, but it's done. And now I just need to put this um, front back on. I also dropped one down the bottom there, and which is typical, but I had to remove the under tray, which is only four bolts. And it just comes off like that. So now I'm gonna put everything together and hope the car starts. Whenever I'm putting back together like bolts like these that are slightly rusted, I like to um, use this copper paste. You can also use like this anti-seize, the silver stuff, which is does a similar job. But I always like to coat them with that because you never know when you have to take this off again. And it makes your job a little easier. I also use this tool for the clips. It's really handy. You basically put this on the end of the clip. Make sure it's on. And then you squeeze this trigger like this, and it should. And then it locks into place. It has a lock on here, so it holds it open. And then you should, if it's opened far enough, you should be able to slide it over the hose. A bit hard with one hand. But you get the idea. Okay, people, next up is the alternator belt. Well, I have just uh, removed it, um, but you didn't miss anything. But what I will say is up here is the tensioner for the belt. And you have to uh, twist it to remove the tension so you can take the belt off. Um, this T4 has air conditioning so make sure you get the belt that um, is for the air conditioning because it's longer um, what I use to take remove the tension from the tensioner sorry this it's really hard to film <laughs> these tricky things it's right at the back there but anyway what I used to take the tension off was um, a big adjustable um, spanner so let me see how I can do this with one hand and uh, okay that's good okay so I use this and I slipped it over this shaft like like that if you can see that's better and then if you can see that when I twist it it moves that tensioner and that's just enough 
um, to take the tension off to remove the belt. Um, I took many pictures before I removed the belt because it's always like this. I've done it many times before on my T5. I did it a few months ago when I changed this belt that you think you're going to remember which way it goes, but <laughs> I had forgotten. So I took lots of pictures with my phone before I removed it. So that's always a good tip when you're doing anything like this. So I'm going to try and figure out how to put it back on and then um, let's see how it goes. Okay. Right. Something I always do as well is that I check that the new belt is the right belt so you don't go through all that trouble. This is the old one. Um, it was quite loose. There was, um, it was, didn't have super tension on it um, when, before I removed it. Um, and then this is the new belt. So you should always obviously check the um, width is correct, which this is. Again, I went for the higher quality. I think the cheaper one was um, 15 euros and this one was 25 um, same again because I don't want to be doing this again in six months I want it to last a lot longer and obviously it's not a guarantee that it will but um, that's how rules I live by but you always check um, the length I can't really show you with one hand but um, I pull them tight um, each end and make sure that the new belt is about the same as the old one. Obviously the old one, if it's stretched a bit, it's going to be a bit longer, but yeah, that's a good rule. Okay, that only took a couple of minutes. Um, I started at the pulley, uh, the tensioner at the top, because um, there's a small gap that you have to get the belt through, so that's always, and it's the furthest and hardest pulley to get to, so I put it on the tensioner first, and then I worked it around um, following the pictures that I'd taken and then I uh, the aircon um, pulley is the last one that I um, put it on because it's the closest and the easiest to get to uh, the adjustable spanner trick worked really really well um, I was able to um, get enough um, tension off to be able to put it on it's not quite on just there but I might just take the tension off again and push it back on but hey it was pretty actually okay job to do so that's that done so now I can get this tray on as you can see I have some oil leaks and issues but hey this is just uh, this is just my winter van so it can leak and I'll uh, sort it out in the summer okay winter tires are on um, I hate the color but I don't really care, it's the winter. You can't have a, dirt, a clean car in the winter. So these are just gonna get filthy anyway. And um, you know, even if I wash this thing, it's gonna look like this 10 minutes later. So anyway, uh, winter wheels are on. Um, obviously check the tightness of it, all the nuts so they don't fall off. Um, but let's see if she runs.